Okay. Any questions about the powerhouse anymore? Okay, one more building I want to go over tonight, and then we'll do some Q&A, and we'll touch on any other buildings that anybody wants to see, and we'll go over that kind of stuff, is the tech plant. Um, I didn't really want to do the tech plant on Esamir because it breaks all the rules, but we're going to do it anyway because the tech plant is a very important building to learn how to hold, how to take, how to defend, things like that. So, Valkyries. Valkyries are the way to go. I want a Valkyrie up for each squad. We're going to drop on the balcony. Which, if you look on your map of the tech plant, go to your map now, the end where the platoon waypoint is, the round end, is always the balcony. A lot of people drop on the square end, the other end. That's not the balcony. You don't want to drop there. It's a bad spot. Always oh, for alpha. To drop on the balcony. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the Valkyries there. The meta for beacons at the tech plant is on the legs, off the balcony. I'm going to put Alpha Squad Waypoint on one, Bravo Squad Waypoint on the other, and when you drop on the balcony, you can kind of jimmy over a little bit and get on those legs and get around behind and put the beacons behind where they go. Uh, they have mosquitoes overhead with banshees, by the way, guys. Yes. Yeah, they have a lot of air there, so be careful. It might be better to go in galaxies. Do it. Yeah, I'll pull a cow. Thank you, Horace. Alright, we're going to hit this tech plant and we're going to take it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to drop on the balcony, we're going to funnel in, and we're going to take all three points here. This tech plant is unlike any other tech plant in the game. It's got three points. It's got Bravo, which is on the bottom floor, which is over by the zoom tube with the rabbit hole where it comes out. It's got Alpha, which is on the second floor, kind of near where a typical tech plant point is. It's got Charlie, which is on the middle outside portion. It's not quite on the top, but it's underneath there. So normally, when you go to a tech plant, typical, regular, six minute hold, one point, eight point in the middle tech plant, you want to drop in through the balcony and funnel in. You want one squad to stay on the balcony, not the outside balcony, the inside balcony. The upper level, one squad must stay there. Another squad is going to be down underneath the balcony, watching the rabbit hole, the zoom tube where they come out. Oh, look at Horace doing pro strats, dropping his right alpha on. beacon. Oh. Alright, funnel in and kill these people. I want this balcony clear. Fantastic. Okay, where I'm at now is the balcony. In a typical tech plant, this is where you hold from. This is the most important piece of this. You'll fan your squads out otherwise to cover different points. But as long as you hold the back balcony, you will take the tech plant. Now, if you move forward past a point, this is the gun deck. This is the forward gun deck. Generally, you want two squads up here. You want a squad watching the front doors, where so they're coming in there, grinders. And you want a squad that's split by these two stairs. This one here, and this one over here. So it's two squads forward on the gun deck, but again, don't go downstairs, we don't need to go outside, they will come into us, there's no way for them to take the point without coming into us. So make sure your squads are cohesive and position them properly. So it's two squads forward, two squads back. Once again, that's for a normal continent. Esamir breaks all the rules, I hate Esamir. Um, Grinder. Yep, grinders, put your guns there. Listening to this instructional uh, seminar, just hearing gunfire and frantic explosions in the back of the ground. Great. Yeah, the one thing I cannot stress enough about these is there's no reason for you to be outside. Zero reasons None to be outside. Whatsoever. None whatsoever. If you want kills, just stay inside. They're gonna come. They're gonna yeah. come inside. That, that's the only way they can take the point back if you're trying to take it is by coming inside. So once again, one one squad up on the upper balcony. Not outside, but inside. One squad underneath, watching the rabbit hole, and the two jumper things coming up. Don't usually need too many people there, because if they see them coming into the rabbit hole, they know where they're going next. And then the two squads forward on the gun deck. If you can position people there, even though you don't have anybody on the point itself, you're golden with the tech plan.
Any questions about squad positioning or anything like that? Enemy medic in the area. They're on B. Lightning yeah, they have lightning over the rabbit hole. You are better than this. Show them. E point back. I see people flooding in there. Good job. Valkyrie on the balcony. Kill it. Shield Alright, let's get on these points, guys. Make sure we hold them. Fan out a little bit, but do not leave the building. No reason to go outside. If you can see sky, you're wrong. Get back in the building and hold these points. I never go outside anyway, so that's not a problem. Yeah, poor gamer. Oh, yeah. Yep. Poor gamer. It is important to watch these zoom tubes, the rabbit holes, what this called, where they come out, because they can get here right from their spawn room. So they're going to flood out through there, they're going to try when they run into us shooting down at them and they can't get more than a foot out of the, the zoom tube, you know, they're SOL. They'll try and go through the front door grinders. Coming through the one. grinder. Get them. Kill them. Big See? pop coming through. See, they couldn't get through the zoom tubes, so they got to go through the grinders now. A good little tactic is to hack the uh, vehicle terminals as well, below the um, so what? the balcony. Yep. Uh, and I've seen people like pull um, like anti-infantry uh, sunders. They can be really helpful to cover the zoom tubes. If you just don't want to take the rapid hole that works too. An entire uh, Valkyrie in here as a spawn point on C point. Uh, that is an option for C point. Yeah. Have it sit here. Uh, just a tip for newer players, if you um, happen to run by the giant gun, kind of in the middle of this tech plant, not every tech plant has them, um, but these orange shields, if they are inside of these orange shield looking things, you cannot shoot into them and they cannot shoot out. Um, so if they're stuck in here, you have to go in there or you have to wait for them to come out. So don't get stuck in there, um, try to avoid being in there and growl them in there if you can't because it's easy. Yeah, and really, as long as you're taking it, they can't take the point from there. So let them sit in there right. and stew. Right. Just hold them Because they now. can't shoot out from it either, so. Right. That protection goes both ways. But this is the only tech point I think that has that, so Esmir breaks all the rules. Yes. This is a difficult training because it's Esmir and the rules don't apply here, so. But we went over it. And we took it. There are a couple of um, bases with these orange um, shields, which is why I mentioned it, but... Yeah. But as far as tech plants, this is the only one where it really makes a difference, that orange shield, because it's so close to one point. Look at that, we took a tech plant. So the mm, delicious blue. Delicious certs. Nice work, everybody. Nice work. Sir, I got a question for you, uh... Certs? You, you'll more experienced peoples. When you crouch behind the grinder fence rail, um, like the doors go super glitched, can the enemy still see you? Or is that just me? Yeah, they can see you. But okay. they're gonna be under so much fire, it probably doesn't matter. You can just straight up shoot through that too, that's crazy. Yeah, they can shoot you through the railings and you can shoot through the railings as well. So just be careful where you're crouching. So your legs are definitely exposed on these open. There's like, a, there's some few panels. That's where you want to stay um, because they can shoot you and they can get your legs through the. Yeah, keep moving. Don't stand still. Keep moving. Just dodge back and forth. 80, 80, 80. Dodge back and forth. Keep moving. If you're moving target, you're harder to hit. Bro, show us your first threat. Turpentine! Oh That's yeah. Look at her go. Wow. Oh, I'm so good at this game! I'm just so good all the time. They just can't <laughs> even shoot you. Okay, do we have any more questions about tech plans or any other buildings that we hit today? Shield generator critical. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here since we went over the buildings that we wanted to go over. You good, Carol? I think I covered everything that I wanted to. Okay, good deal. A couple points that I wanted to mention uh, while everybody's here. A couple things to mention. As you're leading platoons, try not to overextend. 
don't sit on people's warp gates. It's not fun for them. It's not fun for your platoon. We are a community-minded outfit, which means we care about the NC and the TR. Not all fuck NC, fuck TR. You know, we're going to make them miserable, bully them. That's not what it's about. This is about gameplay for everybody. So don't overextend. Don't sit on the warp gates. Not only that, that it's mean-spirited, but you're going to put yourself in a much more vulnerable position. If you reduce the lanes that they have to fight each other, like if we completely warp gate the NC, they don't have a choice. They're going to push out and kill us because we've made them angry, which tactically is a bad idea. That leads to lost alerts. That leads to them turning around and doing the same thing to us. Maybe you're not online. Maybe we don't have the best platoon lead that's going to be able to handle something like that, and you're ruining fun for a lot of people. Your five minutes of fun sitting on somebody's warp gate makes a lot of people miserable from the other factions, and it ends up coming back onto the VS and making us miserable too. So please try not to do it. It's fine to touch their warp gates, but back off of them. Alert. No reason to sit there. It serves no purpose. And also, we started the alert by touching the TR warp gate, and we backed off. That was perfect. Back off after you start the alert. That's what you have to do. And then we can we can pull back and have actual good fights. And everybody can have a good fight. Everybody can have good fun. And it, it's just it's a community thing. SKL is very worried about the community as a whole. But we do care about the NC and the TR to make sure they're having fun as well. Without enemies to shoot, the game dies. Exactly. Also, an issue that we've been having recently is the mass invites being spammed again and again and again. You start a platoon, make an announcement now, fit chat. Hey, I'm starting a platoon on SMU. I'm going to send out mass invites in about 30 seconds. If you want to join, feel free. Wait your 30 seconds, send the mass invite, that's it. You don't need to do it again every five minutes. That annoys people. And I don't know if everybody realizes that, but as squad leads, you still get mass invites. If you're a regular person in a platoon, you do not get them. But as squad leads, you do get them. So as a squad leader, as a platoon leader, to get mass invites constantly, it is very, very annoying, and it takes your attention away from what you're doing. Yes, it's an easy thing to hit deny, but there's no reason to do it again and again. It's rude, and it's annoying. So just be sparing with it. Make an announcement and outfit, a very brief one. Don't sit there and talk for 10 minutes. Then not your mass invite, invite and have it be done. Your platoon will fill up. This is SKL. We've got people on all the time. We're on public platoons. Your platoon will fill up all on its own without having to do the mass invites multiple times. I require a medic. Obligatory attention legionnaires. Yeah. Yeah. Or be stained, though. Can't, can't take that from him. Yeah, still though. He, he would be completely yeah. okay with that. He, he's a sharer. Ruby shares. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and break this here unless anybody has any questions. Everybody good? Uh, I just have, sorry, one more one more thing to add here. Um, for just our future PLs or any squad leaders at all, just one thing that I wanted to touch for all here, kind of like did, um, make sure you're watching platoon at the Requesting typing because a lot of nonverbal people that we have here that are spouting really good information in that chat and these people um, are good at having call outs uh, just for this platoon alone I mean we had some questions in platoon chat that we wouldn't have seen if we're not paying attention so just make sure you're paying attention to that chat box Try not to get too wrapped up in that yell chat again we are community ridden uh, outfit so Watch what you're saying when you're representing SKL, and just make sure you're paying attention to that platoon chat and that squad chat as well. I can relate to that. I used to be that guy that didn't have a mic, and all I would do is type. So it's nice when somebody acknowledges you, and you know you support everybody. Exactly, and it makes them feel good. It makes them feel heard, and that's what we want. We want here. Somebody doesn't talk on a mic doesn't mean they don't know what they're doing, and they're not seeing something that you're missing. So definitely pay attention to that. And it also shows you in the chat if somebody deployed a beacon. So if you have a question, if it's a mm -hmm. beacon up, you can see in the chat there somebody from your squad did put a beacon up. So make sure paying attention to the small little gray things that you might overlook all the time. And as a squad lead also, if you put a beacon up in a really great spot and you say, oh, the beacon is up, it's in a good spot, do not replace it unless it goes down. And ten seconds later you hear that click that somebody replaced the beacon. You can see in there who put the beacon up and you can yell at them personally. <laughs> I bet that's Cass's favorite way of using it. Once, you can do it more than once, you can do it at that point. Yep. This there's an infiltrator covering C up here. Kill him. Nah, he got me first. Uh, one Anybody thing, have um, any questions? Oh, sorry, oh yeah, just, just one thing I'd like to add about um, player bases and killing fights. So, um, a great example of this was yesterday on Endar. 
or so, it, it was yesterday or two days ago. Um, if you guys look at Indar right now, if you go up to Lowland Trading Post, which is above Quartz Ridge Camp, there was a heat time, and people wanted to go for um, Indar excavation. That would have that would have killed the fight if we took Indar excavation and basically invalidated the player base. We don't want to we don't want to kill that we don't want to kill a fight like that. They were having a big big nice armor battle and it would have been a huge huge dick move to try and take the base and kill the fight like that. Yeah, I mean you gotta use your situational judgment. If it's the time, if it's an alert, and you need to do it, do it. But if it doesn't really hurt anything, you're not gonna gain anything really by doing it. Leave it alone. Let people have some fun. Oh, chef's kiss for thinking about the content. Absolutely. I mean, we you know, realistically speaking, this game doesn't have a whole lot of content. It's got some missions, it's got a campaign, but beyond that, it's just taking bases, killing things. We as leaders create the content on this game. We create the platoons, we create the fun, we bring people back to this game again and again. We're the content creators for this game for the most part. Alright, if there's no other questions, I think I'm gonna call it here. Does anybody want to take over this platoon and run it as an actual fighting platoon? Thanks, Carl. Yeah. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for both you. of you. Thank you all for coming out. There's, a, there's a look. I know it's Here, not the most I'll, exciting uh... thing like this, but I think it's important stuff for us all to know. And once again, you know, these, these are tried and true, true methods for taking these bases. It's not the only way. It's maybe not the best way, but they're solid ways to take these bases. And you're free to take them and, and make them whatever works for you and your leadership style. Yeah, absolutely. Take what works, uh, leave what doesn't. That's right. There you go. Thank you, Kasami. Thank you, Cass. Um, actually, I'll take Platoon Leader if you guys want to give it to me then. Sounds good. Make sure you heard those I cats, everybody. Squadly. Most important. More cats. Heard those cats. Woo!